All right, today we're going to talk about our low amp clamp and um, how to set it up to do a starting a starter uh, draw test or a relative compression check. Um, there's been some confusion out there where um, guys were making just some uh, mistakes on the setup, which allowed them not to be able to do the test correctly. And so I want to clear that up so uh, people can use this test because it's really uh, a quick, fast, handy test that I that I use quite often. Um, so what is a relative compression test? For the guys that don't know, uh, we're going to check the compression of an engine without anything coming apart by hooking our low amp clamp here around a battery cable. We're going to put it in clear flood mode if the car has it, like a GM, you can just hold the gas pedal down. It shuts the injectors off. Uh, we can crank the engine over and check uh, a relative compression check. So even though we don't have PSI, we're seeing that each cylinder is is even or equal to the rest, that we don't have a low or a dead hole. <clears throat> I used to pride myself that I could hear a dead hole just by cranking it. And I've been burned by that enough times where I just take the extra couple of minutes to do this test. And by turning channel two on, verify my timings correct is another thing that I like to do as well. So um, before we get on how you set the scope and clamp up to do this test, let me show you a picture over here on my computer of what the waveform looks like um, that we're going after. So here's a picture of a good relative compression test. Um, when you first do it, you're going to spike probably off the screen and then it's going to come down and stabilize. And each one of these peaks here is uh, top dead center of a cylinder. Now with just one channel going, I do not know uh, what cylinder is what. They just all come across the screen and keep repeating. So if they're all even, I'm not really worried about that because if they're all even, then I'm good to go. But let's say I have a weak or a dead hole, like this next one's got a dead hole here. You can see this cylinder is completely dead. That's what's causing the misfire. I definitely don't want to try to tune this up because there's uh, a compression problem or mechanical problem. You know, this was a four-cylinder engine, and you can see it repeating itself. Now, if I had this scenario, I'm going to want to know what cylinder that dead hole is. And that's really easy to figure out, is I'm just going to turn channel 2 on. And once I turn channel 2 on, I'm going to take it and back probe the number one coil on plug trigger wire. So every time that number one coil triggers, I'm going to get my waveform from that. You notice it lines up this peak right here. Well, that tells me that's cylinder 1. Then just put your firing order in. 1, 3, 4, 2... One, three, four, two. Now we can identify what cylinder is which. Also, what I like about this test is it verifies my ignition timing is happening at top dead center. Now, if this ignition timing was happening, let's say over here in the valley, well, that tells me maybe my timing belt jumped, um, the crankshaft trigger wheel spun on its hub, or, or something that's knocked the ignition timing out of whack. So in one, literally four, five minute test, I can verify my compression and that my ignition timing is happening at the correct time or not. And I've been using this test for a long time and it's a, it's a huge time saver. And so let's get back to the scope here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you how to set it up and some of the mistakes guys were making. Uh, get back to my Zeus here. So, <clears throat> to start with, um, we're going to go here to <coughs> scope multimeter and we're going to pick our lab scope. <clears throat> now here's where a lot of guys make the mistake because when you look at this amp clamp, it says 20 amps and 60 amps. And then when I look at my 
choices here. I've got 20, 40, and 60. Well, Snap-on used to have a uh, an older amp clamp that had a 20 and a 40. Their new, newer ones are 20 and 60. Um, turn this phone off. Things going crazy. So these are presets in the tool. Now a scope can only read voltage over time. So when I'm using amps or pressure transducers or whatever, the, sco the scope is receiving a voltage signal and these presets and the tool is doing the conversion math for you. Now, when we're going to do a relative compression check, you know, the starter is going to have 150 to 200 amps. So these presets are way too low. <clears throat> but if you look at any of these accessories for a scope, they're going to have a little math formula to the, to the right. So if you look at that 60 amps, to the right of it, it says 10 millivolts equals one amp. So that's what we're going to use. We're just going to have to do our math myself ourselves because these pre presets here on the tool are too low. Now, an amp clamp, the way it works is when you hook it around a, a wire, it's going to um, measure the magnetic field around that wire and the, the tool is going to give it a voltage and it's going to go into your scope and if you're working on the presets there the tool is going to do the math for you and convert it for you well since we're at 150 200 amps we're going to have to do the math ourselves just remember the 60 amp scale 10 millivolts equals one amp so we can't pick any of these presets because they're way too low so most guys will pick low amp 60 and that's a mistake they make we're going to have to go to volts dc which I can see why guys get confused on that. So now we're on volts DC and our low amp clamps on the 60 10 millivolts equals 1 amp scale. So when the scale when the when the scanner turns on or the scope's on channel 1, we got to pick our probe. Well, this is where the guys will make another mistake is they're picking low amp 60. And we can't pick that preset because it's way too low. We still got to go to test lead volts DC. So that's where another guy's make mistakes at. And then we don't need to peak detect on because it's a slow signal. I like turning the filter on to clean up the signal as much as we can. And when we get to the voltage scale, um, when we do the math, 10 millivolts um, equals one amp. So if I pick one volt, every full volt is a hundred amps using that math scale. So it makes the math pretty easy. You know, that, uh, we pick two volts, that's 200 amps. So now my screen's 200 amps. So that's where I usually pick for this uh, test. Two seconds on our time base, uh, a rising slope. I drop my trigger down low. And then now if you look at our scaling here, um, you can see that like one, that's 100 amps, 120, 140, 160, 180 amps. So when you're on that scale, the math is really easy to do. And at this point, I'm ready to do the test. Um, there's another feature I like where this file tab is. I can click that file and I can save configuration. So what I, what that does is it saves this setup and puts it in our presets so we don't have to set it up or remember we can just go right to our preset so I type in relative compression test hit save and now it's in our presets so if I back up and I go back in from the beginning right here's our presets so I click on that the tool comes with some uh, presets of its own but you notice down here relative compression test so it's already saved all I gotta do is click on that and boom I'm right back up ready to go so any of these custom type tests that you want to put in there you can save them to your presets and it makes it fast and easy to get the tool set up <clears throat> so at this point I'm ready to go um, just remember 
that we've got to use volts DC on when we when we're picking our scope and when we pick our lead the tool is going to be on the 60 amp 10 millivolts equals 1 amp scale we're going to set the voltage at 2 which is 200 amps and the the uh, two second time base works really well for this test and then you're ready to go so most of the time when you're using your low amp clamp that 20 and 60 amp um, presets in the tool is going to cover the majority of the stuff you do and it's going to do the math for you it's just when you get into these uh, starter draw or relative compression tests uh, where do you need to do this and um, you, if you want to do this on diesels you're going to need to get a, a high amp clamp because it's got a much bigger jaw to get around them fat cables this one here will do pretty much all the cars and light trucks and back in the old days the low amp clamps were so small in the hole up here that they'd never fit around a battery cable you had to use a high amp clamp on on uh, everything but anyway if there's any questions I hope I explained that um, good and got rid of some of the confusion I know I'm not a professional speaker and sometimes don't explain things good enough but if there's any questions leave them in the comments um, I know I wasn't very good here lately about replying but I'm gonna stay on YouTube a lot more serious now so I'll try to answer all the uh, questions I get anyhow thanks for watching hope it helps um, if there's something else you want me to cover on a scope or the scan tool let me know I, I enjoy making these videos so Good luck, and uh, just remember it ain't easy being greasy.